and welcome back uh, in the previous video we started prepping the uh, the timing cover for install and we got the timing cover seal put in that was part one we'll come back to the timing cover here in a bit because before we put the timing cover on I want to get the um, rocker arms for the valve um, assemblies in place so that way we can spin the engine over a couple of times and test and make sure that we have valve movement uh, before we go putting that timing cover in place because once we put that timing cover in place we don't have access to be able to see you know, any of the timing gears or timing chain in the event that we have to change something so what we're going to do next is go ahead and get the uh, uh, the valve uh, actuator arms uh, in place and you can see that these push rods are hardened push rods they came from my tuner hence why they've got his name and his numbers uh, stamped or slashed engraved on them well actually they're actually stamped on there actually no I can yeah I can catch the lettering with my fingernail uh, so we got the longer set and a shorter set a pretty much standard Hemi setup you'll notice that that push rod is longer than this one and just looking at my notes here so the shorter uh, shorter rods go to the intake side and the longer side longer rods will go to the exhaust side and uh, from what I can gather on the install process, it's easier to do the exhaust uh, arm first. So we'll get that one taken care of, and then we'll do the intake. Now, if you remember, when we disassembled these, when we were taking these bolts out, we had one bolt strip out, and this was on the uh, passenger side. Uh, passenger side, let me see, I think that was on the, let's look, does it have an eye on it? Yeah, passenger side intake. So it was actually this bolt here in the end. And I was able to find replacement bolts for that. And that's the part number that you see there. And just to compare the two, yeah. You'll see that that, yeah, that's pretty much identical. So that looks like that's the correct bolt. It looks like it may be a threaded a little bit further up the uh, up the chain than, uh, than the previous one. But looks like that will work as a replacement. And it's got the same shoulder on it. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yep. So once again, there's that part number. What we're going to do, we're going to work on uh, getting these push rods in place, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll bring you back for that. Talk to you later. Welcome back. I uh, just want to show you this real quick. You can see that these, uh, this is the replacement bolt for the one that inadvertently got stripped when we removed the rocker arm. And just to show you that these bolts have a little bit of a, you can see that metal tab or retaining in there, which is part of the washer underneath. Uh, you, because of these ears, you kind of have to thread the old bolt out and the new bolt on. But when you do so, make sure you don't flare these little metal tabs out on either side too much. Otherwise, it won't fit back in the rocker arm and you kind of have to push them down flat. Uh, but once you have that in the right spot and you have those tabs out of the way, this will seat flush back in with that rocker arm. Uh, so just want to show you that real quick that, you know, you can change this out, but be mindful that that's there and that is part of the washer that it sets on. Also, do not break those tabs off. You do not want little bits of metal floating around an engine where there shouldn't be. Talk to you later. And welcome back. As you can see, we have our um, exhaust push rods and rocker arm assembly in place. It's not too terrible. Let me get a shot of that in there. You can see where the exhaust rod comes out and the intake rod, which is going to be the shorter one for the intake, is going to go in the hole right above it. And I'll try to get a shot of that once we have it in there. But when you're putting this rocker arm in there, what you're wanting to make sure of is make sure that the push rod is seated inside of this cup all the way. And on the exhaust ones, it's not too terrible to do because you can see without, you can, and not without, but you can see that you have a nice clear line of sight on all of them. Uh, the intake one's a little bit harder to do because you can't see it, so you kind of have to feel feel around the lip of this with your finger and make sure that push rod is seated. Now another way to check it, and we will do this once we have both sides installed, 
is that we'll rotate the engine over a couple of times and verify that we see all of our valves moving. And provided that we see that, then we know there is a pretty good bet that we have everything seated like it's supposed to be seated because you don't want one of those push rods to kind of seat on the edge because the first time you start the engine, it'll go, it'll pop off to the side and pop out of that cup and you'll be, you'll be down a cylinder having to take the covers and stuff back off. Uh, but what I'm going to do next is we're going to work on getting the intake one on. Oh, one other note, when you're doing the exhaust ones, you're going to be fighting the spring tension a little bit. Because in relation to where the cam is and how far out it's pushing the push rod, it may push the push rods out. Let's say, for example, that one there and that one there may be pushed out further than the others. So the others will seat, well, these will seat okay, and you leave a little bit of a gap down there. So... What I ended up doing, or what we ended up doing, was following the torque sequence you see here and slowly hand tightening them down, following one, two, three, four, and five, working our way down, keeping it even as we were tightening that. Again, hand tightening, we'll torque it here in a bit. As we're hand tightening that down and getting rid of uh, the gap, making sure that the one or two push rods we had, which didn't couldn't quite reach, because they were being pushed out of position due to the other ones, just making sure that when that cup finally came down far enough to make contact to the push rod, we just made sure that it's seated. And we're going to do this. You'll, you'll have the same scenario even on the intake side. Again, it's just a relation to where the cam is sitting based on when you go to tighten that down. And before you put anything on, I did this as well. I had one that was being a little fidgety, that first rail we put in. We just rotated the engine over a little bit, so those exhaust valves weren't being pushed open as much, and then it made it a little bit easier job to get that arm in there. But again, only rotate the engine over if you know that it's safe to do so, and you've got everything where it needs to be. Uh, in our case, we didn't have anything on here, uh, so it was okay for me to do that. Well, now that we have one torqued on there, I'm not going to rotate this engine over uh, anymore until we have you know, everything in place that needs to be in place. But uh, we're going to work on the intake ones and then we'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. Real quick, just want to give you a shot of this. You can see our push rod there. You can see our exhaust push rod, which is attached to our rocker shaft. And then you can see our intake push rod that we just put in. So just to show you that, you know, the exhaust ones do go in the lower holes. It, it is lower. It's slightly lower than its intake uh, intake counterpart there. But hopefully that gives you a good shot of that. Also, when you're pushing these push rods in, when you push them in, you'll feel them make contact with the lifter. And more often than not, it'll kind of push the lifter up against the cam lobe and kind of seat it and if you feel that which we did do on all these intake ones uh, that's a pretty good indication that you've got that push rod where it needs to be at least as far as the lifter is concerned so we're going to cut it here and we'll continue with this and we'll bring you back thank you and welcome back as you can see we've got our intake uh, valve arm in place at this point same process as before. Like I said, it was just a little bit trickier because you can't quite see, you know, where these things are sitting. So you kind of just have to reach in here by feel. Use your finger and just make sure that each one of these uh, intake push rods are seated into the cup. And these feel good. And just did the same process as before. We haven't torqued it in order to get it down because again, you're finding spring pressure. You can see that some of those springs are already compressed just because of where the cam is in relation to what you're doing. So again, just to try to keep it as even as possible, use the torque sequence when the hand tightening and just follow the sequence until was able to get the uh, rocker arm down far enough to get uh, all the push rod push rods in, in contacts with with that cup. Now, if if your results are a little bit different, it could very well be that remember that we put in an aftermarket cam. That's going to make the profile considerably different than factory. We also put in aftermarket springs, which make the profile considerably different. So some of the things you're seeing in this video, as far as me having to kind of, you know 
tighten things down by hand a little bit to finally get everything to seat may not be necessarily what you're going to run into if you're just swapping the factory cam for a factory cam. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, regardless of how much resistance you may run into, you'll, you'll run into some, uh, again, just because if that lifter is in a spot where it's trying to push that valve open because of the position of the cam that it's on, again, that's, that's the tension you're fighting is that spring tension as that arm is, you know, pushing that valve open. Uh, but with that being said, uh, we're going to concentrate on the driver's side. I won't bring you back and video that because it's literally the exact same procedure that we're doing here on the passenger side. Once we get the driver's side done, we'll get everything torqued up and then uh, and then we'll bring you back. Thank you much. Bye. And welcome back. Uh, we've got everything torqued at this point. Uh, we've got everything torqued to 16 foot-pounds uh, per the manual. And the torquing sequence that we used was a sequence that you saw earlier uh, as we were kind of hand tightening down. And we did follow through when we had our 16 foot pounds and we got everything torqued in sequence. We went through and followed the sequence twice to make sure that everything stayed that way. So per the, per the instructions, uh, we're going to let things sit for about five minutes to give those lifters a chance to, uh, to spin down. Although I don't think it's really necessary in this point because we put new lifters in. But... The book says wait five minutes before you attempt to turn the engine over. So we're going to give it its five, and then I'll get you set up on the tripod, probably looking at the passenger side cylinder head because it would be easier. Uh, and then what we're going to watch for, like we said earlier, is just making sure that we see all valves on both sets of cylinder heads actuate. Uh, and if we do, uh, we'll, we'll consider this done, and we'll start uh, moving on to the next piece. Uh, talk to you in a bit. Bye. And welcome back. Got you zoomed in a little bit um, just on some of the valves, uh, not all of them. And what we're looking for is that now that we've got everything in and torqued down, we're going to rotate the engine over and just verify that we see movement out of all of our valves because that will help us verify that we've got all the push rods A, seated into the lifters correctly and be seated into the little uh, receiving cups on the rocker shafts themselves. So I'm gonna turn that. I turned that a couple of times just to kind of show you. Uh, I'm gonna turn this uh, a few more uh, and kind of keep an eyeball on one set of rockers at a time here. So I see movement in that valve. See movement in that valve. Yep, I want that one finally. Okay. So I see movement in all of our intakes on the passenger side. Now I'm going to do the same thing and keep an eyeball on all of our rockers on the other side.
Okay. Passenger side looks good. I saw movement in all of the intake valves and movement in all of the exhaust valves. I was kind of keeping an eyeball a little bit on the driver's side here just to make sure nothing was binding. Of which I don't see anything binding. So that's good. Now that we've got that uh, in place, I'm going to uh, basically just repeat the process and make sure I look at each and every one of them just to make sure that they are. Now, we didn't hear any popping on this one, which is good, but uh, if you watch Reignited's video, um, when he did his turnover, you heard one of them pop. And what that was, was that was in a case where one of the push rods wasn't quite seated in the cup. And as you turned it over, you heard it pop in place, uh, which is why this is a good idea that when you do this, you may want to, or I shouldn't say may, but uh, you strongly advise to rotate it like we're doing here. That way, again, you're verifying that you're seeing all of your valves actuate. You're verifying that nothing's bound up at this point. Uh, and you're verifying that everything is moving um, as it should. And that will save you, as Reignited stated in his video, and I'll put a link to his video in the description, or one of his videos on this in the description, that saves you a lot of headache down the road versus if you don't do this and you know let's say one of your push rods isn't seated correctly and it pops out of position and now you're dead a cylinder and you got to take the valve cover off and you know investigate what the issue is and then redo that uh, rail to get it seated but with that being said i'll go ahead and cut the camera at this point and uh, i'll go ahead and upload this as its own video uh, it'll just be titled, you know, Rocker Arm Install, as, as you're aware, because uh, when you start watching this. And then what we'll do is that now that we have these in place, because remember earlier when I stated that I didn't want to proceed forward with the timing cover install, because I wanted to make sure that we got these in place, everything rotated correctly, and I didn't want to have the, have the timing cover installed, and then run into some kind of issue where it meant that we had to drop the oil pan again or take the timing cover off. So with this being done, uh, the next video that we'll work on and upload is the second half of the timing cover install. And then obviously when we get that done, we'll, uh, we'll bring you back. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.